So hi everyone, welcome to Trailhead DX. Um, I'm going to be talking about extending DocuSign for Salesforce with Lightning, uh, and more specifically Lightning for Gmail. So my name is Ken Naku. I work on DocuSign for Salesforce. Been here for about a year. Um, it's a really great company. So I'm obligated to show you this. Uh, don't make any um, investments or financial decisions based off of the information you're going to hear today. Um, a lot of this stuff is conceptual and subject to change. So an overview of what I'm going to be talking about today. Uh, so Lightning for Gmail and Outlook and what that is. Um, some of the various benefits around that. Um, so you guys can start exploring that. And then also how to start building your own uh, components and stuff for uh, Lightning for Gmail and Outlook. And then also uh, something that we're working on here at DocuSign uh, around that. So what is Lightning for Gmail and Outlook? So pretty much it allows for users to interact with Salesforce data and Lightning components within the context of an email thread. So on the left side we have Gmail, on the right we have Outlook. Um, both have a dedicated section on the right hand uh, panel. And it's dedicated for Salesforce, so we can drag and drop uh, standard Lightning components. We can um, display data from records. And it's pulling all this information based off of you know, the content within the email. So we have you know, a lot of email addresses in the thread, and then we're pulling in all that information and creating the content. So why is Lightning for Gmail and Outlook relevant to us? So like I was saying earlier, we have you know, the ability to create these uh, data-driven components based off of, you know, the content within an email. So emails can be used as like a unique identifier and then you can find, you know, your contacts, leads, or associate it with, you know, opportunities and accounts. So for example, I could create a component that will allow for sales reps to um, edit or change or view uh, information about contacts or leads directly within their email application. So some of the benefits of this, obviously, it's a better experience for Salesforce users. Um, no switching back and forth between tabs. Um, no switching back and forth between systems. So you have this centralized location where you can see all of your information. Um, and of course, that could lead to higher user adoption. So making life easier for your Salesforce users will ultimately you know, um, bring up the adoption of Salesforce processes. And then of course it's a new way for us to engage with um, our users. So whether you're creating a managed package or you're a developer um, for a company, you know, it's, it's a new opportunity for us to, to create some cool things. And then of course it's uh, easy to implement and start using. I'm going to touch on that. So enabling Lightning for Mail. So depending on the application that you're using, either Outlook or Gmail, the experience is a little bit different, but it's pretty similar. So for Gmail, um, you're going to have to download the Chrome extension. And you can do that from you know, the Chrome extension store. Look for Salesforce Lightning for Gmail. And then once you download this uh, extension, in the uh, top right corner, you'll now see a Salesforce icon appear. And then for Outlook, um, in settings, you would go to Manage Integrations, and then you would look for Salesforce Lightning for Outlook, and then you can turn that on, and then it'll soon be visible. And then after doing that, you can log in, put in your credentials, and all of that. So on the Salesforce side, we'll need to enable it in uh, Setup. So here I just have Lightning for Gmail, but for Outlook it's pretty similar. So you look for Lightning for Gmail settings, and then you just simply enable it. And then after doing that, you can start creating and editing layouts. So here the experience is done um, in App Builder, which is pretty familiar to a lot of you, I'm sure. Um, so here we can drag and drop um, standard components from Salesforce, display record information, or we can uh, you know, drag and drop uh, uh, components that we built ourselves or got from the App Exchange. So, actually building components. So, the first thing you need to do is add the proper syntax to your uh, component and something like clients available for mail. So, once you add this syntax for your uh, to your component, 
your component will now be visible in App Builder when you're dragging and dropping it in the, um, for the email application layout. And then of course we need event handlers. So there's some standard objects that Salesforce uh, exposes. So people, subject, there's also a message body and all that kind of stuff. So here, um, you know, like any event handler, on change, we will have some kind of action that we define in our um, client side controller to handle this data. And here's, what, here's an example of what the actual people object looks like. So it's an object with three arrays. Um, it contains two CC and from emails. And then of course here we can do any kind of uh, special things we need to do on our client side controller, pass it to our back end controller, perform queries, return records, things of that nature. So lightning status for mail. So we wanted to create a component that would allow for users to interact with DocuSign envelopes um, within the context of an email thread. So they can see um, you know, envelopes in transit. Uh, and of course, the end goal is to accelerate uh, the signing process. So they can see you know, exactly what stage the uh, envelope is in. And then, of course, there are follow-up actions that need to be taken as well, if needed. So we can resend the envelope. Let's say someone misplaced the env uh, envelope, deleted the email. We can resend it. We can void it if it's no longer uh, needed. We can correct it. So we can make any kind of content changes we need. We can add more documents, change the signing order, um, add more recipients. And then, of course, we can view it. So here is uh, DocuSign status for mail. Um, so if you notice on the right hand side we have a component and um, provides a lot of information so we can see the, uh, the title or the um, subject of the envelope. Then we can see who it was sent from which I think is really cool because you can see envelopes sent by other people within your Salesforce instance. So you can reach out to someone on their behalf, say hey what's going on, you haven't signed this contract. And then we can see uh, the last activity date of it. We can see the status. Um, and then we can see the, uh, the record in context. So I think this is really important because we can see that it's linked to an account, but we can send a um, envelope to a user or person via contact or opportunity or any kind of other uh, Salesforce record. And then of course we have the buttons at the, uh, the bottom where we can take actions. So why should we care about e-signatures for email? I think it's a really good way to, uh, uh, for us to empower our users. Um, so we have all this data that's displayed um, that we can take action on. And of course it's real time data. So as soon as someone signs a document or opens a document, the status will change. And then of course it's an easy way to bring a lot of this DocuSign for Salesforce functionality outside of um, Salesforce. So I have a demo for you guys. So. In this scenario, I'm going to say that I'm a recruiter and our friend Stephen Washington here is an applicant and he's a Salesforce developer. He's in really high demand, so I want him to hurry up and sign this uh, offer letter. So he verbally committed, so right now I'm going to uh, send him an offer letter. So I click send with DocuSign. And for those of you who aren't familiar with DocuSign for Salesforce in general, um, we're at booth number two, so you can ask any questions around that. So here we have the um, edit envelope page. We can add um, documents from a lot of different sources. Uh, but today I'm going to use a DocuSign template. And a DocuSign template allows you to reuse a document so you don't have to keep you know, uploading and uh, recreating the same document. And then we have recipients here. So we have Stephen Washington. So here, I'm going to add a subject, so I'm going to say offer letter, please sign, exclamation point, I'm going to click next. And then on this page, uh, the tagging page, we can actually start editing the content of our um, envelope. So XYZ company now offers you, so we're going to put the person's name. And of course, this information is pulled off of the record itself. So I'm going to do a little bit of formatting. 
clean to so this the position of we can add text make a read only sfdc developer do a little bit more formatting and go ahead and send it so any second now uh, Stephen Washington will be receiving a email in his inbox so let's switch over to him so we have a DocuSign envelope with the subject that we um, gave it click review click continue oh and I forgot to add something so um, if you notice there's no place for Stephen Washington to sign so let's say he reaches out to me and he's like, hey, Ken, uh, you forgot to put somewhere for me to sign. This is really confusing. So from here, um, I can look. And now this envelope appears on the side and it's based off of the email address I put here. So I can click correct. So once again here, you can you know, change any content within the envelope. You can add more documents change the order, add uh, new recipients. So we're just going to click next. Going to add somewhere for Stephen Washington to sign. Click correct. So after that's done, if he now views this envelope now, he should be able to sign it. And he's able to sign it. here present so recap of what you just saw so pretty much we were able to um, track an envelope and make changes on the fly based off of the information that was communi communicated to us we didn't have to leave our email so we did everything within the context of Gmail and uh, we were able to get real-time information on this uh, envelope so additional information, uh, so DocuSign for Salesforce, we're creating and building a lot of cool things. It's on the App Exchange. I highly recommend everyone check it out. Also, visit us at booth number two. Um, also, sign up for, um, you can sign up for a chance to win a Amazon Echo, which is really cool. And then if you have any other questions, uh, email us at lightningbeta at DocuSign.com. Any questions? Yeah, e-signature. They need to get their own number. No, so the person, so like for example, Stephen Washington, he wouldn't need an account to be able to sign the uh, the document. Um, well, it just pulled it off based off uh, his name, so he can change it if he wanted to. Yeah. Any other questions? Sorry, what was that? Oh, yeah, so for the, you mean the template? Yeah, so the template, you won't need to drag and drop that. I just did that for the demo. You can set it up, you can drag all the fields there you want, and then you can reuse that template. Yeah. Any other questions? Sorry, what was that? Uh, yeah, I can barely hear. Do you guys have like another microphone or something? So the question is, uh, that component that you created, can you add it to the Outlook client as well, on the desktop client, or is it just for the Outlook web? Um, I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I'll have to double check. Okay. Oh, there's a question in the back, too. Hey, um, oh. by the way, the, you can do the, um, if you have Outlook, you can put that panel in, in Outlook if you have yeah. 365, and it works. It would work the same way, I imagine, as it would on Gmail or Outlook. Um, 
So my question was, you had a slide that was like the second code slide up there. I was wondering if you could go back to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Came up a little quickly. This one or this one? That one. All right. Okay. I'm just going to get a picture of it. Yeah. Set, go, go back to the other one. Okay. Thank you. Good presentation. Thank you. Any other questions? No? Well, thanks uh, for coming out and uh, hearing me speak. Uh, so we're, we're going to be at uh, booth number two if you have any more questions or just questions related around DocuSign for Salesforce in general. All right, so thank you.